Hello everyone and welcome to this Geeks on the Go video. I am KD and today as you may have guessed from the hat we are going to be talking Pokemon. Specifically a video that people have been requesting from me for a while which is how to host a shiny den. So little thing before we get going. The method that I'm going to be showing you now there is a free version of this which uh, does take a lot longer uh, and also a paid for version which I'm going to be demonstrating to you. Uh, I will say now the paid for version doesn't cost a huge amount, you can do this for less than £10 and it really really is worth it. Uh, I have to say as someone who's used this technique a few times now it makes life so much easier. But anyway, I've split this video into three sections which I think will help break things down for you guys. The first one is uh, checking your seed which will make sense as we go. The next one is skipping frames and the final one is on re-rolling which is a technique that I didn't know much about uh, when, when I first started looking for shiny dens and it would have made life a lot easier if I'd fully understood the process so I'm going to explain it to you as I wish I'd had it explained to me. So into the game. Alright, so we are going to be going for a water den which contains Blastoise and hopefully getting ourselves a shiny G-Max Blastoise at some point. So you just want to fly yourself over to the station here and then we are going to head straight out onto the water and we're going to cycle over to that island just over there. Okay, and once we get to the island, we want to go to the den just over there. Fair warning, uh, there is a different Rotom here every day, and it will try and attack you, so you may want to save yourself some time just by going for it straight away. Uh, we're just going to wait until it inevitably... There it, there it is. Yeah, you might as well just get it out of your way as soon as you can. Alright, once we've got that done... We want to come over here and we're going to use a trick that uh, I've showed in a previous video but we're going to go over it again now just for anyone who didn't catch that one. So first thing we want to do is we want to save our game. Lovely and just make sure if you haven't already that your tech speed is set to slow. You don't have to do this it just makes this bit a lot easier. Just remember to switch it back when you're done. Now we'll save again because I realize I'm going to be restarting the game a fair bit now. So what we're going to do is we are going to throw a wishing piece into this den. All right. However, we want to make sure that we get the rare beam coming out of it. That's the, the bright white pinkish one, not the, the standard duller pink okay so as soon as you hit yes to save your adventure you need to be ready to hit the home button uh, within less than a second you should be able to see what color the beam is so this might take a while uh, I'll just fast forward through it so that you guys can see the whole thing Alright, so we actually got really lucky then. Uh, we ended up getting the rare den on our second try. That never happens, but uh, I'm glad it decided to happen now. Alright, so let's have a look what we've got in there. Okay, that should be a pretty easy one to take down with my Decidueye. Alright, so we want to save the game now. Again, this is going to be the last time we save the game for a while. Okay, uh, I'm being very, very meticulous about when to save and when not to save. So whenever possible when following this tutorial only save at the same time I do alright so we are going to catch this Pokemon uh, with one this level we don't need to worry about inviting other people so we're just we're just gonna go in on our own uh, with Decidueye at this point you don't even need to be connected to the internet uh, however we will be doing that in a moment Alright great, so now we have the opportunity to catch this one, um, doesn't matter how you catch it, you can use any ball you want, in fact you can use a master ball if you want, because everything we're doing here is going to be reset. 
don't bother re-rolling in order to get a better Pokemon for this. Uh, honestly, whichever one comes up first is the best one to go for. Alright, fantastic. Alright, so our beam's gone. That's absolutely fine. We don't need to worry about that. What we do need to do now is we need to set up for the next stage of this, which is using our seed checker bot. So uh, connect to the internet and then just to save yourself a bit of panic later, go into your Pokemon boxes and find the Pokemon that you have just captured. Obviously you can set up the box for it to do this uh, before you go into the raid, but I don't have that kind of forethought. All right, and just pop it in an empty box up at the top here. Uh, like I said, this will save you some panic and stress later on because the trade we're going to do, you only actually have 15 seconds to do it. So you don't want to be messing around looking for this guy. And then last but not least, we're going to go back into the Wycom, link trade, and set link code. And we're just going to leave it there for now. That's it for the game for the time being. The next thing we need to do is we need to use one of the Discord bots uh, or previously Doodoo bot, which at the point I'm making this video still hasn't been updated since the DLC dropped and is therefore not really usable. So there are a number of uh, Discords that you can use in order to do this. Some have paywalls behind them, but essentially what they've done is they've got a modified switch that is just working as one of these bots. Now, unfortunately, at the point I'm making this video, uh, about five of the ones that I have options to are currently down, which does happen more often than not. So I will be linking multiple discords and it is worth joining each of them in case something like this happens. Here we are uh, in one of the few discords that's working. Now, the issue I've got at the moment is that the queue uh, is pretty full, um, although it actually looks like uh, the queue has reset. So we may be in luck. Uh, I should be getting a message any second now from this Discord bot. All right, so we've, uh, we've got a message from Wigglytuff here. And what this has is this has a code which we need to use in order to start our trade. So in my case, it's five, six, two, four, one, three, four, seven. I would have to put that on the smallest and furthest away screen. All right, do this bit as quickly as you can because uh, the bot will time out if you take too long. So what you might want to do before then is set your text speed back to fast. And then it's just going to search for our trade partner. There we go. Trade partner has been found. Uh, normally the bot tells you what their name is. In this case, it's Darkrai, which is good. And then we're going to click and trade our binnacle and the bot is going to cancel the trade. So nothing has been saved yet. Okay, uh, then if we go back into the Discord, we should have received a message, here we go, from our Discord bot telling us how far we've got to go until we can get a shiny. So all of this is quite useful for when you're wanting to check various things, but what we really want to focus on here is the star shiny frame rate, which is 226. That's really, really good. Now, unfortunately, the square shiny frame is, um, obviously it's more desirable because they're far rarer. Reason being that uh, they've only become available in this generation and therefore trading up Pokemon or bringing them up from home, they're not gonna have that square shininess. Uh, the bots tend to, when they get to more than 10,000 frames, just say, better luck next time. So we are gonna go for a star shiny in this case. All right, really important step now. Back to the game. We need to close the game. All right, this is why we haven't saved since before we went in and caught our binnacle. Uh, we're gonna hop straight back into the game. Okay, so I've restarted the game and we're back in. We've got our pink beam. And what we wanna do now is we wanna set up for the Wycom trick or glitch as some people call it. 
So there is one method of doing this that I had in one of my previous videos, uh, but that method takes quite a long time and it also affects your rankings. There is a new method of doing it, it's way faster and it doesn't affect anything like that. So we're just gonna hop into the Ycon and connect to the internet. Any second now, there we go. And simply go down to Link Battle and you're just gonna start any type of battle. Okay, now once this battle has, uh, has started, has got going, we are going to have to break our communications. So uh, I usually wait until just after this point, as soon as we see this blue screen come up, and I'm gonna put my switch into sleep mode. If you have it in handheld mode, you can just put airplane mode on, but unfortunately you can't do airplane mode while it is docked. And as soon as we've done that, we're gonna wake our switch up again, and we're gonna get a message saying that a communication error has occurred, and it's gonna kick us out of that battle. Uh, so, at this point, what we want to do is we want to go somewhere indoors because we're going to be skipping quite a few frames at the moment and if you do that in the wild area, the weather patterns change and that can crash the game, which we definitely, definitely do not want to be happening. So, we're going to go into the dojo, you can go into a Pokemon Center, basically any building where there are no weather effects is going to be absolutely great for this, okay? Uh, now, uh, we haven't saved in a while, don't worry, you don't need to at this point, okay? Uh, but what I would say is, when you are doing this trick, stop every now and then to save your game if you're doing it manually. And how do we do it manually? So, you're going to hit home, you're going to go to your system settings, and date and time. Now, uh, make sure that synchronized clock via internet is turned off, and to make life a little bit easier, I have preset my dates to the 1st of January 2000. Another thing to note with this is make sure that the time on your clock is not between 1 and 3 a.m. These are known as the daylight savings hours. The reason for that being if you are doing this for thousands of frame skips, which is way more common than what, than what we got here, you are going to skip past days in which daylight savings occurs. If you happen to skip onto one of those days, and your clock is set in that time between say 1 and 2 a.m. that doesn't actually exist because of daylight savings, you're going to mess up the whole thing, all right? So just make sure it's at a nice time that is not gonna be affected by anything like that. All right, so what we would be doing if we were doing this manually is we would be entering the date and time and we would be upping the day by one, hitting okay, and then repeating, in this case, over 200 times, in most cases, a few thousand times. What we're gonna be doing, though, is we're going to be using a device that I mentioned very briefly at the beginning of the video, which is this, okay? This is known as, well, it's got many terms, but best known as an Arduino board, okay? This is actually a knockoff one, which is a bit cheaper, but works just the same. Uh, link to where you can get this is going to be in the description below and it only costs eight pounds All right, uh, I should point out. I'm not in any way affiliated with them. I just got one of these I think it's an amazing device Especially for this kind of thing and there's lots more you can do with it, which I'll go into some detail with later on Okay, most of them will come with one of these cables with a USB end to it and For the most part that is all you need all right You'll also need a piece of conductive metal, uh, and I'll show you what that's gonna be used for in just a second. And if you're doing this without the use of a dock, say if you have a switch light, you will want one of these as well, which is a USB to USB-C adapter that you just pop on here so that you can plug it into your switch later on. So, we're gonna plug this into our PC and I'm gonna show you the apps that we're going to be using in order to make this work. All right, so we have our board plugged in, uh, which you can tell by the flashing LEDs there. And what we need to do is we need to reset this. So you can see there are two little pointy prongs here, six in total, but we're focusing on these top two here. And we're just gonna take our conductive piece of metal, in this case for me, it's uh, a pair of pliers, and we're just gonna tap them on the top there for literally, you don't need to do it for more than a second. 
that is going to reset the board and allow us to put our own data on there. Here are the applications that we are going to be using for this. Um, the first one up here is the Auto Controller Helper. Uh, this was developed by a guy whose videos I am going to be linking in the description below uh, because he goes into a much more detailed analysis of how to set up this whole thing. Uh, originally, you actually had to program this to make it work. Now, uh, he's made it so that it's literally just this application, which is super easy to use. Okay, so this gives us many options. So if we look at the program here, we have, um, we've got auto battle tower, auto fossil, auto host, um, lotto, which uh, replays the lottery if you, you want to get some master balls and stuff. I played with a few of these, the egg collector and egg hatcher work like an absolute dream. But today, what we are focusing on is the day skipper. All right. Now, uh, make sure that you are set to the right device. In this case, uh, we're going with the Atmega 16U2. Okay. Uh, it says Arduino. I know it's not actually an Arduino, but the uh, Uno R3. That's that's what we're working with. This is it's essentially a knockoff version of the Arduino, but works just as well. Make sure your date settings are right. We have the option of European, Japanese, and US. Japanese is a bit faster because it doesn't have to skip as far in order to get that day up. Uh, European actually being the slowest. But um, for the sake of this one, I don't really want to change mine uh, because we don't need to go that far. So I was told that I was gonna get a star shiny at 226, which is hella good. We actually wanna stop a few days before so we're gonna go for uh, 222 now the crazy thing here is that it's telling us that it's gonna take 2 minutes and 34 seconds even at such a small number of frame skips this would take me uh, an age I, I don't even want to think about how long it would take me there's also the fact that if I was doing this manually if I messed up it would ruin the whole thing and I trust this board not to mess up a lot more than I trust myself. Um, make sure that it's got the date input there. You can set it to today's date, uh, but I've got it set to our 1st of January 2000, just like I do on my Switch. That's an incredibly important bit. Make sure that the dates match. Otherwise, it's going to skip months when it's not supposed to. Uh, and it will even tell us what date it is going to finish on. Uh, and here we have this you don't have to do anything with this you can completely ignore this but it is a really really good way of making sure that you don't miss anything so uh, system time is unsynced you saw me do that uh, we talked about the daylight savings that is done we have activated the Ycom glitch we haven't gone to a Pokemon Center but we've gone to the dojo which works just as well we've got our cursor hovered over date and time you can see it in the the bottom right there glowing over the date and time and then all we need to do is plug in the Arduino there and what we're going to do is we are going to save and generate a hex file just by clicking there all right and it literally it's only about 12 kilobytes so it does not take long to do and you can see the file name here dayskipper.hex all right uh, we're then going to go to our root directory, which is very simple because it's the same one in which you get the application in. And we're going to take this dayskipper file here and we're going to drop it into our documents folder. And then you'll see there's an option to replace because I've done this before. If this is your first time, you're not going to have this up. But we are going to replace the file in the other destination because that's set to a different number of skips. And then we're done with this. Okay. The next bit is here. So this is uh, an app called Flip, all right? And this is for use with the Arduino. Uh, again, I will pop links in the description below uh, so you can go and download this. All right, so this, uh, this took me a while to get my head around. It's actually very, very simple. It's something like, I don't know, less than 10 clicks and you've got the whole thing going. So first of all, we're gonna go to this microchip up here, select a target device. And we're going with our at Mega 16 u 2 just like we did up here. All right, and just click OK. All right, 
So everything, everything's gone very dull over here now. So now we're going to hit this USB one uh, and USB open. So it's telling us that we could not open the device. If that happens, it's absolutely fine. Just means you need to reset the device again. Uh, and that just means tapping those two bits of metal together with your conductive metal. And we'll try that again. There we go. And it's worked. So uh, as you can see, it, that happens every now and then. Uh, it just means that you didn't do it quite right the first time around. Uh, but now, now everything's absolutely fine. And we are going to load our hex file, which we can see here called Day Skipper. As you can see, I've tried out a few other ones just to see whether they're any good. I may do a video on them at some point. And then finally, we're going to click Run. Okay. And that's it for the PC side of things. So now we just have to unplug our Arduino and plug it into our switch. Before we do that though, very, very important step that often gets overlooked, all right? Uh, your controller. If your controller moves in the slightest while you are doing this, uh, I mean like any of the joysticks, the buttons, anything like that, it is going to reset the bot. So we don't want that to happen. Best thing you can do is to turn it off. You don't need it for now. So the easiest way to do that, slip it out of the controller, or if you don't even have it in the controller, all the better. Um, and we're looking for these little buttons just here, okay? You just have to tap that, and there you go. The light's gone out. Same with the other one. Light's gone out. There is now no controller attached to our switch. So this should only take a couple of minutes now uh, as the... Um, as the app has told us and we're just going to take this end the USB end and we're going to plug it into our dock like I said before if you don't have a dock you can get one of these a USB to USB C adapter and just plug it into the bottom of your switch where you would be powering it okay and as you'll see as soon as I plug this in from the awkward spot that I have my dock placed the bot starts going. And as you can see, it is going pretty fast, a lot faster than I would be able to go. Uh, now, obviously, sometimes this is only going to take a couple of minutes like now. Other times it will literally take hours. Okay, you may end up with a shiny frame of over 9000. In which case, even with the bot, it's going to take a good few hours to do. However, that's not a few hours where you have to be sat here on your switch, uh, just doing the same monotonous thing which if you're like me you'll lose focus and you'll end up messing the whole thing up. Uh, one little mess up here and the whole thing is ruined. This, you can leave this. You, you can trust it to get on with the job and you can go and have a nap, uh, get some gardening work done, make a snack, whatever you want to do and this will just get the job done. So this is just about done now, um, luckily this one was a very very short one uh, and once it's done it will go back into the game for you and you can just unplug the bot, its job is done. We're gonna reconnect our controllers now and hopefully that has worked. All right, so we're just going to hop on our bike and we're going to make our way back over to the island. All right, we can see that our rare beam is there, which is the first good sign. Uh, there are lots of points where you can stop and check when you're doing this. You can save at any point now while you are while you are running through the frames. Uh, if you've got a really long one and you're doing it manually, I would recommend stopping. Uh, usually they say every year within the frame skipping just to save or possibly go and check. You can actually, if you want, you can go back, you can catch the Pokemon, you can send it to the bot again just to make sure that everything is working the way that it should be. Alright, so back we are. We've got that Rotom again that's going to come and attack us. Let's get rid of you. Okay. 
So the fact that the stone is pink here, that means that the Wicom trick has worked. So we have actually skipped the frames that we wanted to, okay? So we can see there's a tentacle in there at the moment, but this is not the Pokemon that we want to get. Remember, we stopped a few days before. So what we want to do here is we want to save our game. So in order to get to the frame that we actually want, uh, we need to head back to the date and time settings. And we're just going to jump forward a few days to make up those last few that we left off. So in this case, we are skipping forward three days. And fingers crossed, we should end up with a shiny Pokemon. Now, uh, the only way to actually check and confirm for certain that it is a shiny is to actually get into a battle with it. So we're going to connect to the internet and we're going to invite some people to this match because even though we're just doing this as a check, if it does end up as a shiny, uh, then some lucky folks will get themselves a shiny Pokemon or at least the opportunity to catch a shiny Pokemon. Alright, doesn't seem as though anyone wants to join. That's their loss. We're gonna hop in anyway. And fingers crossed. We have ourselves a shiny. Okay, so now we know that our shiny den is working. We know that it is three days ahead. So, uh, in order to host the raid, what we would need to do is, um, around this point or even slightly earlier, you just want to hit sleep mode, or again, airplane mode will work, and then wake your switch up again. And when you're back in the battle, it'll tell you that communication with the server was interrupted. You may need to throw an attack in, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, now, that was the reason why you normally want to have other players in the battle, because if you don't have any in, then it's automatically going to make you go into offline mode, okay? We don't want to be doing this in offline mode because it makes it a lot harder to jump out of the battles, but normally, if you're in online mode and you have other players in there with you, when you go to sleep or when you put your switch into airplane mode, uh, it will kick you out of the battle. Occasionally, if you do it a bit too late, you will have to attack first, but the attack won't go through. It'll just, it'll just kick you out of the battle. All right, now, let's say, for example, that we don't want that Pokemon anymore, okay? What we then need to do is we need to do a reroll. And a reroll is incredibly simple. So first, come out of the game onto the home screen, and we are going to close the game. Now, remember, you saved the game uh, before you started your manual three-day skip forward, okay? Uh, saving then is so incredibly crucial. If you haven't saved since the last point I mentioned it, then you have to go through the entire frame skipping palaver again. Luckily, I have had the sense to save in the right place and at the right time. So, we are going to activate the Wicom glitch again. Uh, like I said, it's much faster and easier to do this than it was in my previous video. So we're just going to connect to the internet, we're going to go to link battle. Doesn't really matter what battle you use, I've just gone for double because that's where my cursor was. And once it's found someone, we are going to drop out that battle by using the sleep airplane mode trick. Okay, so a new player has been found, or tra opposing trainer has been found, and immediately we go to sleep. All right, and just wait for your switch to wake up again. It can take some time, trust me. Back into the game. Communication error has occurred, just like we've done a few times now. Okay, and then we're gonna go back down to our date and time. Important thing to note here, it doesn't matter what the date or time is. So don't think that every time you re-roll you have to skip it back three days first. That's actually gonna hurt you. So we're just gonna move forward three days. One, two, 
three. And then back into the game, and fingers crossed, we should have a different Pokemon. So in this case, we've got a Blissey. Uh, Blisseys are really good to run because of the items you get with them. I do find that they're one of the most boring shinies in the game. But uh, just to test it, we're going to connect to the internet again. And we are going to invite some other players to come and join this one. And hopefully we have a few more bites for this one. Switch Pokemon just to make life a bit easier for them. Send in my, uh, my rubber ducky. Alright, and once you've got your other players in, we just head into the raid like normal. Here we see why I'm not a big fan of Blissey's shiny, because it looks almost exactly the same as its non-shiny, but we've still got those sparkles, which is great. We're going to go into sleep mode, just like before, and we're going to wake our switch up, back into the game, communication error, and you're kicked out of the game. Now what this means is reconnecting to the internet. You can go straight back into that exact same den with that exact same Pokemon. Uh, and it is literally the exact same Pokemon. If you end up catching multiple ones of these on a different Switch, they're essentially going to be clones of one another. And as soon as you are bored of that Pokemon, you can switch to another one just by closing the game using the Wicom glitch and then moving forward another three days. One day at a time, I have to stress that, one day at a time. All right, so that is my tutorial in how to host a shiny den. I hope this has been useful for you. If there's anything that I've missed or anything you're confused about, please do ask in the comments down below. There's also gonna be a link to my Twitch channel where I live stream and to our Discord channel. So you can come in there and you can ask me directly we also host shiny raids in there as well. We've got a, a few people using this technique. I have been KD for Geeks on the go. You've been my wonderful audience. Keep it nerdy. Bye bye.